Hey guys, welcome back. Episode four, cooling system. That's what's happening today. We're gonna to get all that in. Hopefully it fits, but we'll go through the problems that I had. First off, we've got to clean the garage because Matt's coming over to help me do the torque converter bolts. So we'll get straight into cleaning all this out now because these mechanics are a bit precious. They want everything on hoist these days. I'm not down on the ground like I used to be. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Really cleaned out under here since we started doing this. Maybe just like a few times with the hose, but not properly. So. All right, we're back. Cleaned up now. I'm changed. I'm ready to do some work. Matt's been held up a little bit, so it's going to start on the cooling system. So, cooling system, I bought a new three core radiator off um, eBay. It's a Whirly one. They're on there, they're only about 160 or 180 bucks. I think I showed you maybe the last episode, or I'll show you it in a minute. Anyway, the mounts on it were like 30 mil, so I had to get those adjusted. This is the radiator. It's had a few knocks already. So these mounts here were like 30 mil out, like out here. So we've changed it to five mil, but I still think it's going to be a bit close. Good thing is that we can keep, we can move them forward another five, 10 mil if we have to. So we've got to get that in, but I'll quickly show you what the problems I've been going through with the clearance between the radiator and like the intake. So I'll show you the intake that I got with it with the engine because this came out of a race car and it was a rear mount radiator so they had more room in the front because the race cars have no um, like side panels here but they have to keep the front radiator support for the class 7 and 8 I think it is so we'll find the intake so this is the big boy in intake that was on it so that goes in here and as you can see, there's not much clearance there at all. It's cool, but so I'm gonna set this back up. So what we'll do is I'll show you this. So there's no clearance there. That's actually touching it. So what we'll do is now I'll take this back out and we'll put the radiator in, and then we'll measure the clearance. All right. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so this is the radiator in. <laughs> so, all right, more, more issues. Um, so radiator's in now, so like I said, we're gonna have to move it further forward. So I'll show you that again. So we can still go forward like oh, 20 mil, 15 mil. So what I've gone, I was been asking a, a bit online, people, the guys that have been watching on the V8 Hilux Facebook page might've seen me ask a few questions about like intakes and what size I should have. So everyone says like, I think it's, um, is it, it's 100 mil. 100, 102 mil or something like that is the the size of this and the size of the existing one but it sort of like tapers down into like a 70 ish 70 ish mil so I sort of asked a few questions like how much restriction am I going to to give it by going from 100 to 75 
or four inch to three and a half inch to to fit between the radiator and the throttle body. Sort of mixed reviews. Everyone's sort of like you know a lot of people sort of like keep as much as you can for airflow, and I'm just sort of like yeah, well I want to, but it's sort of at the same time we're going to fit what we can fit. Other people are sort of saying you know a air intake system is only is defined by its smallest point. So the smallest one is the throttle body, which is 70 mil. So I'm going to go with the 100 to 75 mil adapter on it to see if see how that goes. The thing is, though, with this, we still got to cut this down. I bought this online on eBay, so I think it was only like 30 or 40 bucks just as a, to play with. So if we try and put that on now, you're going to see there's still fucking there's still no way. So I have to cut it back to about there. Move the radiator forward still. And then we might just fit it. So right now the throttle body to the radiator is 70 mil. If um, the man and the engine mounts and everything like that were right at the beginning, thanks conversions, um, it would be about 85. So 85 to 90. So that would have been nice to fit that. Cheers. But that's not the that's not the case anymore. So anyway. That's that. I'm gonna have to get that move forward for that to work. Radiator hoses. This is actually um, an LS1. What is it? Bottom hose. Upper radiator hose. So this one comes off the top here. We're gonna have to cut this down. Oh, I've got some work to do. This one's obviously way too close. Some of the guys have cut cut it back to this rib. No problem there. So come off that one. Go to the radiator. And then the other radiator hose comes off here. It's gonna to have to go down around. I should have to check which one goes to what. That's your thermostat, so that's your inlet. So I would think the bottom would come around to here, but I better check. And that's all the work I've been doing for months on the cooling system. <laughs> so I'm gonna start playing around with stuff now. We'll take some more videos of doing a few things before Matt gets here. I'll probably take this back out, cut the the inlet, uh, the outlet off. See if how this fits without the radiator in there. See how it looks. Um, yeah, maybe put the extractors and stuff back on. Hey guys, we're back again. Sorry about a um, bit of the hold up. It's been a, a week or so again since the last, like, the last clip you just saw. Got a call out on a Saturday. Ended up taking the rest of the day, so. That's just what happens, but we'll continue on this saga with the, the radiator, so. Come to the conclusion that that three core radiator is not going to fit as much as I want to want it to, unless I like, move the engine back or something like that. So that's on the back burner for the moment. That radiator. But I've done a bit of research on radiators. I was always under the impression that bigger is better, and in a way it is. But once it, you get to a certain point with your cooling, you might just be taking up room that you don't have to. So I was on the, the V8 Hilux page and I was just reading a few things there was a guy that had like a, a 38 um, core a 38 mil two core radiator four-wheel drive run it on the beach everything and it was fine with thermo fans then just started looking at the the different spacing and stuff like that so I ended up with another radiator this week I know the wife's like what another radiator so I bought a two core 38 mil this one actually, the other one I had to get weld. I've got a welder here, but I just don't have time. Got that one welded and moved like you saw just before. But this one actually comes with like bolts and you can slide it back and forth. So these were these mounts were right out here as well. If you undo that and move it back, I might even move them a bit more. Open up the hole a little bit. So that's the new radiator. This one fits much better. <laughs> I couldn't help myself but have a look loud the night. So I'll chuck it in quickly so you can have a look. Now, I'll quickly grab this off and we'll have a squeeze. So like I was saying before in the last video, we've got to cut, cut this down and stuff like that, but we've got a lot more room now. So if I chuck on, I'll say it's sitting a bit low there. We can also bring it up a bit higher, but let's get this, um, elbow on and we'll have a bit of a squeeze, eh? Sorry, I'm not, I'll try to film this all in just one clip so I don't have to edit it. 
So here's this from before. People that don't like the blue, I don't like blue either, but this is just uh, cut to pieces. I'll probably change this to black. All right. Fits. Let's have a look. Okay. So that's not bolted in yet. That, that um, can still go up or down. See what we're gonna do, because obviously if I have it too low, then we're gonna run into this issue here. So I'll have to bring that up a little bit. We have the room. So it'll probably be about there, I'd say. So. That's that touching that, so. I found if I brought it up into the original mounts, the original holes for the radiator, it's like really high and I'd have to oval the the intake pipe, which I don't really want to do. I'd rather just keep it as it is. If I move it down a bit, it gives us a bit more clearance there to have some, have some play with everything like that. So we're going to keep it down low, I think. Now with the intake, it'll probably angle up a little slight, not as much as that, down a little bit and come across and then down into an air box here. What I might do just to get it started, We'll probably cut down this this section here and put a four to three inch re reducer on it. And then that will allow me to get it to this corner. So I was speaking to a few people during the week and I was gonna send my car to get like custom airbox and stuff like that done and, and the exhaust and everything, but I was sort of like I'm jumping the gun and spending thousands on exhaust and airbox and haven't even started it yet. So we we'll use that reducer to get that going so the air sensor can read. Then we can start it up. I'm also gonna get the extractors in. I was I did say to you guys I was gonna heat wrap them. I did heat wrap them. It's bloody hard, but I decided to take it off because it just looked a bit shit. Just cause like the bends in them, I'll get you one now. This is for the driver's side. So like I've never wrapped them before, but it was a bit of a mission, so I've just painted them with like a heat coating with ceramic. Uh, I just got the gaskets for them. I haven't even opened them yet. So these will probably go in today. I might save it for another video, but we're making headway with the radiator. So tell me what you think if like the radiator is going to be too small. It is 500. 500 wide by 425 tall um, two core so I haven't checked how many liters it can hold I might do a bit of a test on that and see the difference between the three core and the two core to see the liter difference um, what else so I've ordered all the fuel stuff now I think I'm not sure if I mentioned it before order all the fuel stuff so I got already got the fuel cell got the reg two fuel filters I already got the fuel pump need to get the fuel line that's all it's way from America. I tried to use Australian, but like it was just all too hard. It just got too hard, so I just ordered America, and it was on its way within like an hour. So that's all on the way. I've also ordered my shifter. So I was saying, I was struggling to find a shifter that I really liked. I liked the, the uh, style of like ratcheting up between gears, but I didn't really like how you had to ratchet down while you're driving to get into a low gear. Like I wanted to be able to like go down really quick if I had to, or slam it into first of the lights. So I got the B&M Progate 4-speed. I'll put a photo up here. I'm pretty excited about that because I looked at the Winters style one and they were really big and a lot of trophy trucks and stuff like that running and it was a bit too big for inside of a small car. So it's similar but it's just a lot smaller. Um, I'm excited for that to go in with the fuel system. I think the fuel will probably be the last thing or probably be after the exhaust. I'm gonna get this radiator sorted now, do the, uh, order the bits for the intake just to get that in position, and then we will look at doing the gear shifter. It does need to be done before the exhaust goes in because the exhaust on this, because in the Hilux, they come in so tight to, to the transmission. So that's the plan at the moment. What else have I got for you? Is I'm mean, really slack between videos at the moment just because it's got a lot going on and it's just whenever I can get time. Like I've only got misses out for an hour now with, with the daughter and the son. So I've just got like an hour just to get through all this. Um, 
I brought all the loom into the car. I bought the stuff for that, just the uh, relays. But what else have I got? I'm not sure if I showed you guys the tub yet. You might have seen it in one of the other videos, I don't know. Let's have a look. So, I got this SR5 tub maybe a few months ago. It's been sitting outside in the rain. It's in fucking rain. Um, it's pretty clean. There's a few dings in it. That's the new tailgate, as you can see here. This tailgate is cooked. That's a 3VZ radiator if anyone wants one. So it was pretty clean inside. There's a few dings on the other side, but um, we'll just sort of get to that when we start painting. I sort of, this is also where I store my equipment. So I also did a bit of like sanding and painting on the roof because it was going rusty just from sitting in here. Like it's not in the, it is outside, but it's covered. Um, other than that, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching. We'll get there in the end, I promise. Hey guys, just a quick one. Make sure you like, subscribe to the page and comment. There's been a few comments in there. I'm gonna to touch on them in the next quick video. I'm gonna do a bit of a Q and A from all the questions that I've got. So I'll try to address a lot of them in the videos, but we'll have a bit of a one-on-one. -on -one. I'll read the question and answer it right for you guys. So check that videos coming up next. Have a good weekend.